Once again here tonight, our community grieving from an act of mass violence, a second mass shooting Saturday night in Chickasaw Park. And it's been one week since the old National Bank sh shooting, which killed five people, injured eight, including a Metro police officer. Hello, everybody. Here at 5, I'm Doug Profit. And I'm Shay McAllister. The mass shooting in Chickasaw Park killed two people and injured four. Today, the coroner releasing the names of those killed in the park. One of them was David Huff at 17 years old. The other was 28-year-old Diaji Goodman. Out of the four people hurt in the park shooting, three are still in the hospital in fair condition. One has been discharged. WHAS Levin's Grace McKenna talked to those already working to stop the violence about what comes next for Louisville. From a shooting at a time when hundreds were gathered here to now calm and empty. It is a very different day inside Chickasaw Park and as community leaders grapple with the weekend's violent turn, they're hopeful there are solutions to come. In the wake of two mass shootings and several other deadly acts of gun violence last week, some community leaders are looking to policy. Ray Sir Friendly C. Barker, a retired police officer, is advocating for a change to Kentucky's law allowing permitless concealed carry. He believes required permits encourage better knowledge about weapons as well as public safety. Others, like Dr. Eddie Woods of No More Red Dots, say a holistic approach addressing mental health and family relationships will also be needed. If we did away with people requiring to have a driver's license in the state of Kentucky, how high do you think the accident rate would climb? What we have to try to come up with is a way that we create a continuum of service where there's no gaps. Woods said he knew one of the victims in the Chickasaw shooting through mentorship programs. He said funding is one thing his own organization desperately needs to bring in more manpower and reach more people. A spokesperson for the mayor's office tells me they're aware of calls to require concealed carry permits and the issue will be a priority as they continue moving forward with conversations with lawmakers. In Louisville, Grace McKenna, WHAS 11 on your side. Now, in a statement to WHAS 11 News, Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg said he has talked to lawmakers from both parties, adding, quote, these conversations are just the first step. We must turn these private conversations into meaningful public policy. We are going to continue to work with anyone interested in pursuing real solutions to gun violence. Also, President Joe Biden responding to the shooting in Chickasaw Park, saying in part, our nation is once again grieving. Jill and I are praying for their families for the many others injured and fighting for their lives in the wake of this weekend's gun violence. Earlier today, LMPD tweeted out an update on LMPD officer Nicholas Wilt's condition in the hospital. They said he is still critical in the ICU, but stable. They also said his family sees and feels all of the love the community has been sending them. And we now know the plan for services for Juliana Farmer, one of the five people killed at Old National Bank. Visitation will be at Tomlinson Funeral Home in Henderson, that's her hometown, on Friday, April 21st from 4 until 8. The funeral will be on Saturday, April 22nd at St. Paul's Episcopal Church starting at 11 a.m. Leaders here in Louisville and across the state continue their calls for gun reform and for the mass shooting and violence this weekend. Today, Kentucky's Black Legislative Caucus met in Frankfurt to keep that message alive. WHS 11's Bobby McSwine covered that event, and Bobby is joining us here now with what seems to be their main push right now moving forward. Bobby, what did you hear from them? Well, yeah, they seem really focused on a red flag law. Now, that law would remove guns from people considered dangerous or prevent them from buying them in the first place. They say it's their responsibility to pass gun laws to make families safe across the state, and they say this would help. If we don't, who? Kentucky's Black Legislative Caucus, standing arm in arm to push for gun reform and to show solidarity with Tennessee lawmakers who were expelled after doing the same. If not now, when? Lawmakers say it's their responsibility to pass gun laws to make families safe across the state. A big push is for a red flag law, a law that would remove guns from people considered dangerous or prevent them from buying them in the first place. Legislators say evaluating factors like mental health would help prevent mass shootings in everyday gun violence in the state. There are times when we need to step in and stop someone before they harm themselves or, for, or harm others. These laws have shown their worth in other states, and I believe the Commonwealth of Kentucky should have one as well. Republican Representative Jason Nemes says he's already in talks with politicians across the aisle, including Mayor Craig Greenberg. 
He says red flag laws can help, but they must be carefully crafted. I mean, there's going to be a tension, but I think at the same time we can do a better job of addressing underlying concerns and um, making sure that we don't allow uh, as easy of access to firearms to people who shouldn't have access to them. As for the push to give Louisville autonomy to make its own gun laws, Neiman says he doesn't see that happening. You know, most of the people that I represent, most of the people across Louisville in every single area of Louisville who are gun owners are, are not violating the law. Overall, lawmakers are hopeful they will see bipartisan legislative action soon. And to the extent we do not address this, we are failing in our responsibility. The Kentucky Black Caucus will be in Tennessee tomorrow to continue to stand with the lawmakers there and push for gun reform. In studio, Bobby McSwine, WHAS 11, on your side. Bobby, thank you very much. The man accused of murdering a Louisville man in a drive-by shooting three years ago was back in court today. Jamico Hayden was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Christian Gwynn was walking home in the Shawnee Park neighborhood on December 19th, 2019, when he was shot in a drive-by shooting. Also today in court, the emotional impact statement from Gwen's mother and sister. I saw would we'll never come home. He would never call us. He would never see his sisters grow up to be the wonderful women that they are chosen to be. You think you got away with something that you, because you you didn't you didn't go to trial, but you didn't because you will forever be known as a murderer. And even ten years later, the quality of your life will would not be a good one. Speaking directly to him today, Hayden was charged with murder, receiving stolen property and possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. According to his arrest citation, Hayden shot Gwen twice before fleeing the scene in a stolen red sedan. Today, Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell returned to work at the U.S. Senate after almost six weeks. He spent recovering from a head injury. This is file video of the senator from our archives. The senator fell hard in March at a Washington, D.C. hotel. He was attending a private dinner. The 81-year-old suffered a concussion and a fractured rib. And now he's expected to work a full Senate schedule this week, we are told. We did contact his office today to see if he's planning on addressing gun legislation now that he is back working. His office responded to WHAS 11 saying, quote, as you may recall, the senator voted last year to pass the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act signed into law by President Joe Biden to help address a number of issues, including mental health. Well, if you're heading out this evening, don't be deceived by the sun. That wind really making it chilly, Doug. I know it. If we had wind around this uh, for uh, Saturday, it might help that air show let, uh, move a little faster through the skies, uh, Shay. <laughs> you hard don't to want believe. too much wind, though. I know. Hard to believe that this Saturday is thunder over Louisville, which kicks off the official derby season around here. 2023 flying by already. That's yeah. for sure. So the, what, do you, what do you think, Ben? Are you going to make it a nice thunder or have everybody complaining on Saturday? Uh, you, you can't blame me, first off. Sure uh, but, but unfortunately, it does look like it could be on the gloomy side as we are going to have it looks like a rain chance, especially in the morning time. Hopefully it'll trend drier uh, by our thunder afternoon for Saturday. We'll have to watch the cloud cover too. If the clouds are too low, uh, that can impact uh, the air show. But right now it is sunny, cool and windy. Wind gust 37 had a wind gust a little earlier this afternoon of 41 miles per hour. The winds will start to diminish as we head through the nighttime overnight winds around 10 to 15. But there's that gust again at 37. Our current high temperature, our current temperature is the high temperature is 63 degrees and we have upper 50s and lower 60s throughout Kentuckyana. We also have a frost advisory for uh, the northern half of the area, basically along and north of 64, where we could see some patchy frost in some of those typical colder valley locations, but most of our area will be frost free, but you may want to protect the sensitive plants just in case. System is moving off to the northeast. It's been close enough to give us the windy conditions and there's actually a little light snow earlier this morning up towards Indianapolis uh, for this evening. 50s and a clear and a bit breezy still through the evening time. Clear and chilly tonight with lows down to the upper 30s and lower 40s, a little colder to the north. And then we warm right back up to the upper 60s to around 70 degrees for tomorrow afternoon. So for tonight, a cold one for this time of the year. 40 in the city, outlying areas in the 30s, uh, 50s at lunchtime tomorrow and heading up to a high around 71 for tomorrow afternoon. We'll track that next system on the way for later this week and into the weekend coming up on our complete forecast. Okay, Ben, thank you very much. Well, it is the latest mass shooting in our country. Police now on the hunt for it. the suspect after four people were shot and killed and two dozen others were injured. This happened during a Sweet 16 birthday party in Dadeville, Alabama, which is northeast of Montgomery. ABC's Rena Roy brings us the update. 
The search intensifying for whoever is responsible for unleashing this violence at a Sweet 16 party in a small rural Alabama town Saturday night. If you or you know somebody that has any information about what occurred last night, I cannot stress this enough, ever how minor you think it is, we absolutely need you to share it. Officials say four people were killed and more than two dozen injured when gunfire broke out at a crowded dance hall. There are no words to describe the emotions that we're all feeling. One hospital confirming it admitted 15 patients with gunshot wounds, most of them teenagers, five in critical condition. Survivor Bree Hutchinson speaking to ABC News from her hospital bed. I grabbed on to somebody, I don't know who, and I was yelling for help and nobody would help me. So I had to like gain my strength and like walk outside like after being shot. 18 year old Phil Dowdle was one of those who lost their lives. He was the birthday girl's brother and a star athlete heading to Jacksonville State on a football scholarship. He had one goal, get to the NFL and take care of his mom. His mother also shot, according to Dowdle's high school coach. She was a chaperone in here, so she was hit a couple times in the legs too. It's tough right now for him, real tough. So far this year has seen more mass shootings than days, according to the Gun Violence Archive. President Biden issuing a statement following this latest shooting, saying in part, this is outrageous and unacceptable. Our communities need and deserve better. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York.